Good morning, everybody. Uh, type JavaScript. How many of you are using uh, TypeScript and, and, and not JavaScript in, in their node code or, or front end code? Perfect. I use JSDoc typings, but it's like almost the same. Uh, a lot of you. Uh, how many would wish not to need to transpile the code that you're running? Probably the same amount of hands raised, right? So I'm going to talk about type JavaScript. Uh, this is a proposal for TC39. We're going to get into it and uh, what it's all about. Um, as I said, it's a formal proposal for enhancing JavaScript that will change JavaScript development forever. That's, that's my, uh, and it's a proposal for adding types to JavaScript. Uh, a little bit about me. I'm, I'm old, like 80s old. Uh, always will be a developer. What I love to do is code. Uh, I'm currently an architect at Round Forest. Uh, we build complex shopping sites. But uh, this is more interesting. I'm also a member of the group that is writing the proposal for TC39. And uh, by fate and chance, I'm the original author. Um, little Dan uh, uh, approached me after I wrote a blog post about JSDoc typings. He corrected a few typos and a little uh, small mistakes. And he said, well, I have this idea um, about a proposal. And he talked to me about it. And I said, oh, yeah. He said, you want to write it? And, uh, like, a week later, it was written. Uh, so I'm, I'm lucky to be here, and it's, it's very exciting because it's something that I've always wanted to do, and we'll talk about that later, why. Um, but I am one of the, a group that is doing this proposal, writing this proposal, but the opinions are mine and mine only, and not necessarily all of the members of the authors of the proposal. This is the disclaimer. Definitely not my employers, and especially I do not speak on behalf of the TypeScript team. The TypeScript team is part, and, and they are on, on board with this proposal, but I do not be, speak on behalf of them. Also, the proposal is officially part of the TC39 process. So whatever we say has weight, obviously, but in the end, it will probably be different uh, than, than, than what I'm showing you today. So it's a long process, which we'll talk about in a second. So we don't know what's going to be at the end of it. This talk will be about this proposal. Where, what is it, and why was it proposed? So let's talk about the where. TC39. What is TC39 for people that do not know? It is, a, it is the committee, it's not a committee, it is the committee for the standardization of JavaScript. It's called ECMAScript for various legal reasons. Thank you, uh, Oracle. But, uh, but, but it's basically the, the, the committee that standardizes JavaScript. And, and amazingly, the, the process is very transparent. I go through all the meeting notes. I'm like one of those crazy, uh, and, and, and everything is written down, all the arguments, all the discussions, uh, issues in GitHub, very, very open, very, very transparent. Feel free to go in there. Um, and each year, they bring out a new version of JavaScript, uh, ECMAScript 2015, 2016, 2017, et cetera, et cetera, and with new features, basically. Uh, array at, uh, a, a string includes, async await, top level await, all these kinds of things were co come out of the TC39 standardization process. And the process goes through a very specific set of stages, which I will talk about. Uh, stage zero is to be proposed. Um, it's a thing that they, we want to propose to TC39. Stage one is we, the, the, TC, the, committee, the committee meets, I think, every two months, something like that. Uh, and they listen to the proposals. And they, if, if they say, yeah, good idea, then it's stage one. It, the proposal doesn't have to be like exact. It can be like a rough draft or, or an idea. But, but enough so that the committee can say, yes, it's a good idea. Let's. Let's further go into details. Stage two is where we go to the, the committee with a very, very detailed draft, basically a spec, uh, and say, this, th this is what we want to do. If they accept it, stage two. If they don't, back to the drawing board. We've seen these things. Sometimes uh, uh, proposals reach stage three and then go back, back to stage one and sometimes disappear forever. Stage three is where we f f the, all the rough parts are, are, are done. Every little tiny bit of detail in the spec is, is cleaned up. And it's waiting for implementation. When the committee says to stage three, then 
like WebKit and V8 and JavaScript Core and, and SpiderMonkey and, and, and all those JavaScript runtimes, uh, one, two, at least two of them, I think, I'm not sure about the, the details, need to implement that feature and check that it's fine. Once uh, the vendors, uh, um, the, the runtime say that it is fine, uh, it gets to stage four, and that's part of the standard. Okay, let's talk about what it is. Uh, it was, first of all, it was proposed on, like, on March this year, accepted to stage one, which is woo, for, great for me. Uh, uh, accepting doesn't mean that that's it. It's going to be part of the, you know, the standard. It just means, oh, it's a good idea. Let's, let's discuss this further. Let's talk about the proposal. So this is JavaScript, right? Regular JavaScript, a function add that accepts two parameters, A plus B. A can be a number, a string, an object, a function, whatever. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, um, that's JavaScript for us. This, if the proposal get ac gets accepted, and I'm get, I will probably get tired of saying if this proposal gets accepted, so we'll uh, assume that it is. No, no guarantees, obviously. So for, for, with this proposal, this will be uh, um, 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 legal JavaScript. So A is a number, B is a number, and the function returns a number. The, you, you know this from TypeScript or Flow, if you're using Flow. Uh, type annotations. Those are the type annotations which say A is a number, B is a number, C is a number. Will this pass in, 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 in the future JavaScript? Uh, if I say that A is a number and I pass it a string, somebody has an idea, will this pass? Yes, it's, it, it's, that's why it's true there, the second parameter. It will pass because the idea of type annotations is that they are only annotations. JavaScript will not look at the annotation and try and figure out whether uh, the, the arguments are legal or not. The original name of the proposal was types as comments. So you have the type annotations, but JavaScript will treat them as comments. So yeah, treat it like comments. And what is the syntax of the types? The, 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 the proposal says, we don't care. This is legal. It's not legal TypeScript. It's not legal Flow. I don't think there's any type system out there that it is legal in, but it's legal. It will be legal JavaScript if this proposal is accepted. Um, so the, these areas with the type annotations, we call them type annotation syntax space. We will be carving out space in the JavaScript syntax for type annotations and for the JavaScript runtime to ignore those type annotations. And we call them the type annotation success space. And when I go into detail about the, 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 the proposal, I will talk about all those type annotation syntax spaces that are reserved for type annotations. For example, more type annotations like, like type foo equals, function uh, uh, return value, et cetera, et cetera. Those are more type annotation syntax spaces. Uh, Obviously, as you can see, you, you probably, it's the same uh, syntax as TypeScript. So most legal TypeScript and Flow and Hegel, by the way, there are more type systems out there than TypeScript and, 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 and Flow. Uh, it's the same places. So whatever uh, a TypeScript you have, most of it will um, will be legal JavaScript. And obviously, this is not a coincidence. Those spaces were chosen in this proposal so that they can correspond. But this is not TypeScript. This is not Flow. This is not Hegel. This will be legal JavaScript. This will not be legal TypeScript. But what do I care if the type annotations are ignored? What, what do I get? Okay. Uh, why do I need type annotations? And the answer is there will still be third-party type checkers like TypeScript, Flow, Hegel, and others that will check your type annotations just like ESLint checks your code. TSC or Flow will check your TypeScript type annotations, but JavaScript won't. JavaScript won't say that a variable is unused, okay? But, it will, but ESLint will. JavaScript won't say that you're trying to pass a string to something that accepts a number, but TypeScript will during the build process. So summary of the proposal. We reserve syntax space for type annotations. They are ignored by JavaScript runtime, are assumed to be checked by third-party type checkers like TypeScript and Flow, 
and correspond to the same syntax space that TypeScript and Flow and others use, roughly. So we announced the proposal on March 9th. And, and the internet exploded. I've never seen, I've, I've never seen a, a proposal get this much uh, um, Twitter space, if you want. Uh, lots of, and, and most of it was good. Lots of finally and yes, and you know, those uh, emojis. Uh, uh, but there were lots of criticism. Mostly good criticism. Some were, well, you know, Twitter. Uh, but, but really, mostly, mostly good criticism, and, and, and the issues in, in GitHub are, are, are fine, and there's lots of discussions there. Um, and I want to address those criticisms in, in this talk and, and, and show why we chose the path we chose. So let's talk about the why. Why add types at all? This is, it's a good question. A lot of people ask that. It is not a trivial feature to add to JavaScript. It's not like, uh, you know, uh, whatever, string.include, obviously. For a feature of this size, the benefits have to be substantial. And I give two graphs as an answer. It's actually two graphs and a half. This is the number of PRs in March 2022. Notice JavaScript and TypeScript. TypeScript has almost the, the, uh, almost the same number of PRs as JavaScript. The JavaScript community is, and we've seen this, is using TypeScript heavily today. So they are using types. They are used in the field and have proven the value. Obviously, if they have not proven the value, then people wouldn't use them. We're not dumb. State of JavaScript 2020. Static typing is the most requested feature. State of JavaScript 2021. Static typing is the most requested feature. And if you're still not convinced, this is from this month. Remember, TypeScript was almost, the number of PRs was almost like JavaScript. Well, this month, TypeScript passed JavaScript in the number of PRs in GitHub, which is amazing. Uh, so uh, I don't know. People want types in JavaScript. They just, so is it worth the complexity? I'd say obviously yes. Three more reasons not to add types to JavaScript. And we'll go through each of them. Types are difficult for beginners to grasp. Valid criticism. JavaScript is simple. Simple for developers. Yes, but my daughter, she's, she's 15 years old. She's starting to learn um, uh, computers, uh, programming. And she started with, well, Java. Sorry, but, but yeah. Not, not, not a good starting language, but, but, but she's fine. She understands types. She's using types. She gets it. It's not that difficult. Yes, if you're starting to learn JavaScript and you've already learned JavaScript, and then adding types after the fact, then that, that, that becomes more complex. But if this proposal gets accepted, types will already be a part of how people use JavaScript initially. So I don't think they will add bigger complexity. And in the GitHub issue that discussed this, uh, there was a teacher uh, which, says, which said, new programmers searching for example code are likely to find TypeScript and Flow examples and then wonder why it results in an error when viewed in the browser. So people copy-paste code, put them in the console or the node repo, and it doesn't work, and they don't understand why. Beginners, don't forget. So this is, this is, this is good. I like that. In other words, whether we want it or not, type annotations are everywhere, so beginners need to learn them. <sighs> this, this one's really weird. Types, most of them are good. I, I, I don't get this. Types increase the payload in web apps. Of course, types make your code larger. So do comments. So does indentation. Do we want to get rid of indentation? Do we want to get rid of comments? No. Do we want to get rid of type annotations just because they make the payload larger? No. Why don't we? Because we have minifiers. Remember those? Where they can minify the code, remove the type annotations, and we're good. So type annotations in development don't need to be removed. No need for minifiers. When you get to production, just run the minifier, and you're done. This is one that's good. I used to be there. Uh, I don't like types. Types are shite. 
I, I have, a, I have, a, I have a, a colleague of mine who was there in, in the days of, of when I thought just like that. Even if I think about that now, today, types are shite, uh, it's not about me. It's about you. It's about the community. And the community wants types. So it doesn't really matter what I think or he, or he thinks or she thinks or they think. What matters is what the community think. And the community, as I've shown in the graphs, wants types. OK, so we want type annotations. But we already have TypeScript. Why do we need to extend JavaScript? And this, this is a good question. Well, most of them are good, except the payload thing. Why not just continue using tooling? There are three answers of philosophical, pragmatical, and political. People, I come from the 90s. I come from the 80s. We have forgotten our roots in scripting. Write code, run it. Write code, run it. We, especially in, in front end, we go through this lengthy build process. And, and we transpile, and we do source maps, which never really work. And we add complexity and complexity and complexity on it. We have become addicted to tooling. We cannot not use it anymore. Junior developers don't understand how this tooling works. They don't. They don't understand the build process, especially in front end, but also in back end. Senior developers don't understand. Seriously, nobody understands. Uh, that's why we have Create React App and Remix and Next and all that, because we don't want to understand it. But it's there. And when it goes wrong and when we need to like, combine it with other stuff, it gets hairy. Tooling is now basically what I think Cargo called. It used to be very important, a guarantee. But today, I don't think it's necessary anymore. It's still necessary for production builds, obviously, but it incurs tremendous run, uh, development time, overhead, and complexity. Philosophical answer. People, it's, it, JavaScript is the only language where we're coding in one language, TypeScript, and Flow, and we're running it in another. That doesn't happen in Python. That doesn't happen in Ruby. That doesn't happen in Java. Well, sort of. Uh, there's a growing rift between the code that we write and the code that TC39 standardizes. And that is not good. We need to mend that rift. We need to bring these two languages together. And, and, and uh, the pragmatic answer, not the philosophical, is, is TypeScript. Come on, it's everywhere. All modern tooling, if you think about ESLint and minifiers and whatever tooling you're using, they must understand TypeScript syntax today. Think of ESBuild and all that. Everybody now understands TypeScript, and that is not good because TypeScript evolves, and they need to keep track of that. And, 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 and not only that, TypeScript now has a monopoly in type systems. If I want to, I, I, I had a lunch uh, discussion. If I want to build a type system today, I can't. Be, uh, the, the, you know, that competes or, or, or works with TypeScript or extends TypeScript. I can't do that. TypeScript or Flow. I can't do that because the monopoly. This proposal simplifies the tooling tremendously. So, and, and the political answer, too, is I think TC39 should be the arena for enabling type systems that will be almost in everyone's JS code in the future. Okay, so we want types to be part of the language, but this will not enable us to standardize types in the future. People got that very quickly because JavaScript has to be backward compatible. And if we're saying we're ignoring content uh, type annotations, we will need to ignore them for, the, for now and for the future. True. But when the need arises, you know, love will find a way. We will find a way. If we want to standardize type systems, we will find a way. Um, we'll figure it out. Why stop at ignoring type annotations? This goes the other way. OK, let's do it the other way. As long as we're doing types, why not embrace TypeScript syntax? Uh, and, and the answer is Microsoft and Facebook with Flow and other type systems want to continue you know, experimenting there in that area. Standardizing it will stop them in their tracks. And we don't want that. We want them to continue experimenting. Types in JavaScript are not done. Um, so that's why I don't want to embrace that we, we don't want to embrace. And we want to continue experimenting with other type systems. I just saw Esno, which is really interesting. People want to, if, if this proposal gets successful, people will want other type systems. And the other one is TypeScript is huge. Standardizing it will never, never, ever end. The, the uh, option is build a type system of our own. You have two options here, cleaner and simpler. Um, 
Now, a lot of people say, oh, TypeScript is too complicated. Let's make a simple one. But the reason TypeScript is complicated is because JavaScript typing, typing is complicated. For example, PIC. You want this code, PIC, to show an error there because PIC chooses, uh, creates an object only based out of A and B. Okay? A type system that enables that is very, very complex, enables other stuff too. So TypeScript is complicated for a reason. The other one is it's too complicated. Let's make it cleaner, like Haskell and OCaml and Reason. But that won't work because JavaScript, you need to change JavaScript to have it be a cleaner type system. And you can't change JavaScript. The third argument is, well, let's go all the way. Let's do runtime type checking. This is an interesting option. Uh, there have uh, um, some, uh, sorry. Um, if you think about it, most static languages today do not do runtime type checks. C++ doesn't do runtime type checks. JavaScript doesn't do runtime type checks. They do, but in the, like, right in the edge. All the type checking is done in the compiler, not in the runtime. It's, it's interesting to think about that. Having said that, TC39 said that we should check this aspect of this proposal. Another one is let's optimize based on type. If I know that A accepts a number, uh, that function accepts a number, I can optimize the code, the, 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 the runtime. And the answer I'm, I'm not, uh, is, is probably not. There's a, a Twitter um, a discussion on that from Matthias Binant. I hope I'm, I'm saying it correctly, uh, on why this will never be feasible in JavaScript as it is today. OK, I'll skip the summary because I want to talk about the proposal. As I said, caveat, this will undergo considerable change. This is just a first draft. But let's talk about what, what, what it is. Function A, this is, in functions, we have type annotations for parameters and for the return value. Big question, where does the type end? How does the JavaScript know what to ignore? And, and, and in comments, it's easy. When you, you look at a slash star, uh, you'll, you, you, you find the, the star, star slash at the end. That's the comment. How do we know where a type ends? We can't delimit by comma. Like, OK, wh when's the next parameter? Because there can be a comma inside the type. OK? We, 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 want, to, we want to deal with that. And, and the answer we found, and again, this can change, is we search for the comma, but we, if there are parentheses like uh, angle brackets or, or square brackets or parentheses or that, we, we count them and balance them and ignore anything in between those balanced parentheses. Okay? That takes care of 95% of types in TypeScript. The others where, where this doesn't work, if you take TypeScript code today, then you just surround them with parentheses, and actually, it actually is valid TypeScript. So some amount of change in TypeScript will need to be done, but this can be a code mod very, very easily, a code modification. And this will allow continued evolution of the types without breaking JavaScript compatibility, because TypeScript and Flow and others can build inside that space very easily. OK, so functions, variables, definition of variables, types. We know this from TypeScript and Flow. Interface from TypeScript and Flow, or maybe just TypeScript, not sure. Class properties, uh, generics, very important, obviously. Uh, importing and exporting types uh, are, are supported in this proposal. Uh, there are things that aren't. Oh, wait, uh, there, no, wait, there are things that are like, what do we do now? Is, is as, because Flow and TypeScript have different syntax for, for, for typecasting. Generic function invocation. This is interesting. Why is generic function invocation a problem? Because uh, it's not valid JavaScript. It, the less than JavaScript treats it as a less than and not as a generic function invocation. We're thinking about dealing with that. Uh, this parameters, I don't want, and, and declarations, which should be in DTS files anyway. Function overloads, which TypeScript and Flow allow. What do we do with that? I don't know. We'll think about something. Abstract classes may have runtime semantics. Uh, member modifiers, public, read-only, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe we're thinking about using a sigil or a sigil, never know how to say that, percent public, percent read-only, uh, to say just ignore those. Um, and TypeScript up, they will not be in the spec. Um, I, I passed the time, I'll try. Enums, namespaces, and parameter properties, these are TypeScript 
constructs that create JavaScript code. They're not just erased from the code, OK? Um, and, and we're not going to support that. And JSX, because, well, that's not TypeScript. The consequences. If this proposal lands, no more transpilation of most of TypeScript and Flow. With real browser ESM, uh, we will be able to finally remove all tooling during, tooling during dev. That's my, my hope. Uh, this will still be checked by third-party type checkers. Slow convergence of incompatible TypeScript and Flow to the new syntax, like the minor incompatibilities. Tooling will become much simpler, and other type systems, hopefully and probably, will be experimented with. But it will take time. It will take years, not months, years. And I think it will be worth the wait. And thank you very much.